Hello everyone, I'm gonna walk you through the solution for the BGP Next Hop Self Lab. So make sure you've got the initial configs ready to go and let's get started. This topology has two BGP autonomous systems. On the left is R1 and AS1, and on the right is R2 and R3 inside of AS23. If I scroll down a little bit, you're gonna see there's two topologies. There's one that has interfaces only, and then there's one that has the IP addressing on it. If I scroll down, I have six tasks for this lab. Task one is to configure IBGP peerings between router two and router three. Task two is to configure eBGP peerings between router one and router two. Task three is to make sure that for all the peerings that you're using the directly connected links. Task four is on R1, advertise its loopback zero prefix into BGP. Task five is on R2, advertise the 10.10.23.0 slash 24 prefix into BGP. This is the directly connected link between router two and router three. Task six, the final task is to use the next hop self command as needed to ensure full reachability between router 3 and R1's loopback 0. Now that we understand the topology and the tasks, let's get started with task 1, which is to configure IBGP between R2 and R3. The first thing I'll do on R2 is go to config t, router bgp23, neighbor 10.10.23.3, remote as 23. Now I'll go over to R3, config t, router bgp23 neighbor 10.10.23.2 remote as 23. Now, as long as the IP addresses used in the peerings can reach each other, there should be no issues with the neighbors coming up. And there you can see the log message on R3 saying that its neighbor 10.10.23.2, which is R2 is up. That takes care of task number one. Task number two is to configure eBGP between R1 and R2. So I'll go over to R1 and I'll go to config t, router bgp1, neighbor 10.10.12.2, remote as 23. I'll go over to router 2 and do the same thing. Neighbor 10.10.12.1, remote as 1. And you can see the log message saying that the neighbor R1 is up. And that takes care of task number two. Task number three is also already completed because we use the directly connected links for all the peerings. If I want to verify that the neighbors are up, what I can do from R2 is do show IP BGP summary. There I can see that I have two neighbors that are up and I'm receiving zero prefixes from them. Task four is to go on R1 and advertise its loopback zero prefix into BGP. I'll go over to R1. And from here, I'm already in the BGP process. I'm going to use the network statement. Network 1.1.1.1, mask 255.255.255.255. And that takes care of task number four. Task number five is to advertise the 10.10.23.0 network into BGP on R2. Now, that's the directly connected link between R2 and R3. So let me go over to R2. I'll go into config T, router BGP 23. And I'll use the network statement 10.10.23.0 mask 255.255.255.0. I can verify that these networks are in BGP by using the show IP BGP command. I can see that R2 is receiving R1's loopback zero prefix, which is the 1.1.1.1 slash 32 with a next hop of 10.10.12.1. I can also see that I'm locally originating the 10.10.23.0 prefix. Let me do a quick ping test to see if R2 can reach R1's loopback zero. And it can, perfect. Let me go over to R3 and see if it can do the same thing. From here, I'll do ping 1.1.1.1. And you can see here that there's a problem. Let me check the BGP table on R3 by using show IP BGP. Okay, I can see that the prefix for R1's loopback zero is there. It has a next hop of 10.10.12.1. Let me do a quick ping test to see if R3 can reach that next hop. And it can't. The other interesting thing here is that when you look at the prefix, there's no greater than sign indicating that this is a best path, and that's a problem. Let's look at the details of this prefix really quick by doing show IP BGP 
It says here that for this prefix, the next top of 10.10.12.1 is inaccessible. And that really confirms what the problem is. R3 doesn't know how to reach that next top IP address, so the recursive lookup is failing. When that happens, the path will not be marked as best and it will never make it into the routing table. At the end of the day, what's happening is that R2 is advertising this prefix to R3. It's saying, hey, I know about 1.1.1.1 and it has this particular next hop. How you get to that next hop is on you. That's your problem. And you could fix this a few ways. You could advertise the eBGP facing range, right? That inter AS link into a routing protocol. You could change the next hop manually by doing a route map, or you could use the BGP next hop self feature. And that's what I'll do now. The first question is, where do you use the next hop self command on which router? Next hop self is going to be placed on the router that has the eBGP peering and the iBGP peering. In this case, that's R2. So let me go over to router two. I'll go back into its BGP config, router BGP 23, and I'm gonna say neighbor 10.10.23.3 next hop self. What this command is doing is it's saying when the prefix comes in from eBGP and right before we send it to the iBGP neighbor, modify the next hop to whatever my peering address is. So what IP address is R2 using to peer with R3? It's 10.10.23.2. This is what R2 is gonna change the next hop to right before it sends a prefix over to R3. Now, if I go to R3 and I do show IP BGP, and look at that prefix again, I can see that the next hop has changed from 10.10.12.1, which wasn't reachable, it's now changed to 10.10.23.2. We already know that R3 can reach this new next hop because it's used for the BGP peering to R2. You can also see that the greater than sign is now attached to the prefix indicating that this path has been marked as best. If I look at the details of this prefix by doing show IP BGP 1.1.1.1 and hit enter, we can see that the next hop doesn't say inaccessible anymore, and that's perfect. The final test is to see if R3 can reach R1's loopback. To do that, I'll do a quick ping test, ping 1.1.1.1, and there we go. We have reachability from R3 to R1's loopback. That completes the final task of this lab. If you have any questions, please let me know.